Tech's 2-0 and in the league. Don't look now, but Colorado and Coach Prime, who I thought were going to be fine, they went on the road to the bounce house against a really good offense. Gus Malzahn, KJ Jefferson from the Knights. Paul, they're 4-1 and one and at the top of the Big 12 standings. Colorado is a legitimate factor right now in college football, uh, and, and there's no denying it. And so here we go again, back with another one. And this isn't going to be one of my longer videos, but I definitely wanted to go ahead and take a second to chime in on Paul Feinbaum's reaction. Y'all go ahead and take a listen. And of all the schools that impressed me the most on Saturday, it was Colorado. Uh, I mean, they went someplace I thought uh, would be incredibly difficult. And they won. They won uh, just in dominating fashion. And, and you know, I don't. I don't need to add to the Travis Hunter situation. But but uh, yeah, as someone who has uh, been very critical of Deion Sanders, I mean, I, I have to say, it was, uh, he has managed this team quite well, uh, in spite of all the bullets uh, and all the attacks and all the, all the criticism. Some of it coming from me. Uh, let me let me put it this way because you and I have said the same thing like if coach prime would just focus on building a program instead of building a brand maybe they'll get somewhere I think he started to do that and so what an incredibly short-sighted remark to make sounded like somebody that's never built anything from the ground up in order for Dion to do what he's doing now he had to build a brand first he had to focus on building a brand he couldn't just take for granted that a lot of these kids we're gonna come play for him. A lot of these four and five star recruits, instead of going to Alabama, instead of going to the Oregons, instead of going to all the other power five schools, we're gonna come play for him off his name alone. Because the majority of these kids never watch Dion play unless they watched him on YouTube. And in order to compete with the Nick Sabans, the Urban Myers, coaches that have won national championships and, and coaches that have built a brand off of winning and coaching for historically dominant universities, he had to build his brand because his alma mater, Florida State, wasn't going to hire him. And that's a place where he could have picked up four and five star recruits easily. And so he had to do what he had to do in order to attract talent to want to come play for a university that hasn't been relevant for over 20 years. And truth be told, the reason why guys like this have an issue with Dion is the same reason a lot of people have an issue with Dion. Because some of the people that I talk with that have an issue with Dion, they'll tell me straight up, hey, I don't like Dion, I think he's too loud. I think he's too arrogant. He's too this or he's too that. And I'm like, you know what, cool, I can respect that. At least be honest with me. At least tell me what the real deal is, what the real issue with Dion is. Don't pity pat around the issue and try to make it about this or make it about that. You don't like him because he's too loud. He's too outspoken for you. And that's cool, I can deal with that. We can rock with that. It is what it is. Keep it moving. And so more than likely, that's the real issue that a lot of people have. And uh, I give him a, a, enormous credit. I, 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 did, I don't think very many people thought this was possible other than maybe a group of sicko fans out there in, in Boulder. Um, but uh, they're back to being a, a legitimate story for the first time. Uh, last year, it wasn't legitimate. It was there fine. There you go. Uh, early on this season, it was just, it was drive by. But is it now more important for him than ever to, to say less because you're turning a lot of people's opinions, yours, mine, some of the national media is going to be like, wow, wait a second, they might be in contention for the Big 12. You don't want to saturate that with peak coach prime. And so basically he's saying to shut up and dribble. Keep your mouth closed. Be happy you got a job. Be happy you're winning. Don't rock the boat. Don't ruffle any feathers. And just be happy you got a job. Because what has Dion done? Besides praise the kids in that building, each and every last one of them, besides be a good mentor, besides be a good leader, what has he done? Have a DJ in the locker room? Have some celebrities show up on the sideline? What did he do? Since he's been there, I haven't heard of one single incident of anybody getting in trouble. Not one. Because if there was, trust me, we would have heard about it. It would have been world news. And so, like I said, the issue was not with Deion Sanders, the coach. The issue was with Deion Sanders himself. We, we look at things objectively, and, and we're both saying the same thing. 
I mean, I, I sat there uh, late yesterday in, in admiration of what they were doing because it was so dominating. It, it was it was it was it was a master class, and he takes away from that when when he does the things that he does. So uh, let, let let the work speak for itself. And I, I think everyone in college football who knows anything, who's not just barking from trees, uh, understands. And so I guess I was one of those people that was barking from the trees. And I'm going to try my best not to read into that because y'all know me. You know I like to go deep sometimes, a little too deep. And so I can read into that. There's a little innuendo behind that, I'm sure, but I'm not going to get into that. But it is what it is. Paul Feinbaum had to eat a little bit of crow, had to get a little bit of that humble pie. But y'all go ahead and let me know what y'all think in the comment section as usual. And as usual, peace and chaos.